first time I'm recording with a human. It's much easier to just talk to myself. Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of Ocean Pancake on YouTube. Today we are chatting about my favorite places in the world to dive. In 2023, it is my goal to put a spotlight on climate change and the impact it has on our ocean. Since this is the number one issue our whole world is facing. Now, a little bit about me. If you do not know me, my name is Kat. I was a scuba diving instructor for eight years. I have been scuba diving since I was 12, which is now way too many years. In that time, I have been lucky enough to dive all around the world. As we know, coral reefs are one of the key habitats that will be impacted by climate change due to heat waves, ocean acidification, and many other aspects. I have a whole other video if you'd like to learn more about the climate change impacts on reefs. Now, I don't know if you can recognize where I am right now, but I'm on the Great Barrier Reef. I'm lucky enough to actually live right next to the Great Barrier Reef, well, three hour drive. So we head out here almost once a month to come and dive and explore these incredible reefs. As you may know, it is one of the seven wonders of the world. Since there are over 2,700 kilometers worth of reef and over 5,000 individual reefs that can be seen from space. Absolutely incredible in terms of the biodiversity, in terms of the health, and in terms of what will potentially happen in the future if we don't protect it. Climate change is one of our biggest threats to our reef, and that is why I want to highlight it today. The second reef I would like to talk about is Ningaloo Reef, or basically any of the reefs on the far northwest coast of Australia. I was lucky enough to live there for three whole years, and in that time I drove up and down the coast free diving and scuba diving, some of the most pristine and incredible spots I have ever dived. Now, unlike the Great Barrier Reef, the colors on the West Coast reefs are a little bit different. They're a bit more subdued. You are experiencing a lot more corals, hard corals and soft corals that are more in the browny, yellowy family, but that doesn't mean they're not as healthy or thriving. They're just different species on the other side of Australia. And you guys know, Australia is an extremely large continent. Now, in Ningaloo Reef, I was lucky enough to dive with everything from humpback whales, minke whales, tiger sharks, manta rays, dolphins even came to say hi, and plenty of other species of shark. Almost on every dive, I would see some form of shark, ray, as well as a large variety of fish. Honestly, Ningaloo Reef and the reefs surrounding it are probably the healthiest reefs I have ever seen. In terms of the resilience to coral bleaching, this place is absolutely incredible. Well, if you have a chance and you're looking to dive somewhere in Australia, if you don't want to go to the Great Barrier Reef, consider the west coast of Australia. Partially due to there not being as many farms with runoff like the east coast of Australia, partially because of the lack of population and the cold currents coming from Antarctica along the west coast, the coast is just truly incredible, magical, and a must-do for you. place I wanted to talk to you guys about is Raja Ampat. Now I haven't been lucky enough to go there but from all the reports from all my friends as well as the general consensus Raja Ampat is one of the healthiest reef ecosystems in the world. It's in this unique intersection of the Indian Ocean and the Pacific Ocean in the heart of the Coral Triangle. Currently, Raja Ampat is the home of 75% of the world's hard coral species which is absolutely astonishing. Now, one of the main reasons that Raja Ampat is this pinnacle of healthy reef ecosystem is due to the hard work of Conservation International, the Natural Conservancy, and WWF. They place a lot of effort to work together with the local populations. To there are currently nine marine protected areas covering more than half of the region. By having these extremely strict marine protected environments, they are managing to not only boost the coral reef coverage, they're boosting the fish species, they're limiting the amount of tourists that can go there and have their human impact on there. And they also ensure that the revenue generated by tourists goes back into protecting the area, which builds up the communities in the surrounding area, being able to go back into protecting the whole environment. And it's this beautiful cycle of ecotourism, conservation, and supporting the locals whose land and beautiful reefs we are 
are lucky enough to visit, hopefully one day. to go to Fiji last year in 2022 and have a first-hand experience of diving in these areas. Fiji is absolutely incredible. Not only do the locals have an extremely strong bond with the ocean and desire to protect it and keep it preserved in its pristine state, but it is also an incredibly biodiverse island where all the marine life from the surrounding deep ocean comes to congregate. Fiji on a map is, is a very, very tiny dot in the mass of blue, so it is a haven for many marine species. When I was diving there, I was astonished by the amount of coral reef coverage I saw. Not only was the coverage insane, but the sheer density and the color and the vibrancy and the millions of little fish I got to see there were absolutely incredible. Now, I will say that in a lot of the areas around the islands where I went, there weren't too many bigger fish, which, which are used as an indication of the overall health of the coral reef. However, once you go a little bit further from the islands, those fish are all there. Now, also near to the islands, I tried my very best to look up how many marine protected areas there were, and I could only find about two or three officially listed on the internet in English. If you are from Fiji or know more about Fiji, I would love to learn about all the other marine protected areas that they have, and potentially maybe we could all work together on making them a bit more accessible. Because I do know in the ones that I did see, I even saw some people fishing in these green. As we know, a lot of ocean areas that are marine protected areas are very difficult to, to patrol and enforce because, again, the ocean is very, very large and little boats with fishermen are very, very small. So it's easy for them to slip under the radar, especially when there's not that much funding available. The last of my top healthiest reefs in the world that I want to mention are the coral reefs in the Red Sea. Now, the Red Sea has a very special place in my heart because that is where I actually started to dive. I first got my open water ticket when I was 12 on the Great Bear Reef, and then every year after that, my parents were kind enough to take me diving for a week in Hurgada or Shaman Sheikh, which is on the Red Sea. We would go there for a week, and if we went to Hurgada, we would take a little boat out and get to dive some pristine, incredible spots. And if we're a Charmeron Sheikh, you could actually walk straight from your hotel into the water and dive the massive reef drop-offs, the walls of incredible coral just off of your hotel beach. Now, I know I was extremely privileged to be able to do this, and I'm so grateful to my parents for giving me this chance to fall in love with the ocean. It also gave me a great foundation of what to expect from coral reefs. The Red Sea is teeming with life. I remember when I first went to the Great Bear Reef following diving in the Red Sea, and I thought, where are all the fish? And that's because in the Red Sea, you would be diving, and you'd enter a whole school of fish. You'd be within the shoal, swimming around, and all you could see in any direction is fish. The fish, there was more fish. I do want to have some notable mentions of places that I have dived, which had incredible coral reef health. One was Cambodia. I mean, I've never seen the extent of purple anemones as I did in Cambodia. However, Cambodia did have a really big issue of overfishing. So in the whole four months that I lived there, the biggest fish I saw was about this size. So that made me really concerned as an ocean conservationist and ocean lover. Uh, but in terms of the coral, coral's thriving, coral looks beautiful. So we can see that the climate change impacts did not quite hit it there yet. And lastly, I'd like to mention Comoros, which is an incredible place just north of Madagascar. I lived there for eight months and the coral reefs were also thriving there. They recently made the Moheli National Park an actual marine park. Therefore, the fish species are also protected there from any net fishing or spear fishing. So we got to see a healthy, balance between fish and coral and sharks and rays and everything like that. I truly miss diving in the Comoros and the people who live there are some of the friendliest, most amazing people I have ever met and I miss them every day. Lastly, another notable mention is Cuba. Everywhere I was reading when I was doing some research for the healthiest reefs, Cuba would come up. So yeah, 
check out Cuba if you have the chance. Now, in your opinion, where has been the healthiest coral reef systems that you have seen and why? What did you see there? What did you see on your dad? Let me know down below. I'm always thrilled to hear stories and kind of add other places to my bucket list. These are the healthiest coral reefs that I know about and I hope we can keep them this way. That is up to all of us though. As you know, this year we're gonna be focusing a lot about climate change chats on this channel, so yeah. Everything we do, every decision we make day to day can impact our reefs from our electricity use, our choice of products, our choice of purchasing new versus used. Everything you do matters and helps protect our beautiful reefs. Thank you so much for watching the video and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!